Welcome to Revival is Here Again with Good Heart. God is about to speak directly to you as this message is guaranteed to impact your life. As you listen today, expect that God's Word has been sent in your direction to bring about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me to receive God's Word through His choice vessel, Good Heart Obi Equime. My good friend, my name is Godhard Obi Ekwame. Welcome to our broadcast. Revival is here again, otherwise known as Reha, syndicated across many stations in the world. So I'm glad you're able to join us in this broadcast. I'm sure that your life is about to take a total turnaround at the instance of the word of the Lord. Remember, whatever God does, he does primarily through the instrumentality of the word of the Lord. He sent his word, his word healed them and delivered them. Sit back, relax. Call your friends all over the world. We're going to have a party in the Holy Ghost. These messages were trapped in our live worship experience in our local church called Roger Revival House of Glory International Church. Traps the fire, the passion, the zest that occurred in our service. Sit back, relax. Remember, God's word is a proper instrument for bringing about change in the lives of his people. He sent his word. His word healed them and delivered them. Fasten your seatbelt and enjoy this message from Reha Broadcast. Enjoy. Hallelujah. Praise God. First Samuel 30 verse 8 and First Timothy 6 verse 12. Woo! Ay, ay, ay. Santo te queredes. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? Mm. And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. The last word in that text really gets me excited. It's one thing to recover some, Another to recover few, another to recover most, but to recover all, count me in. <laughs> Have you lost some things? Well, there is a pattern in God that assures and guarantees recovery. Hallelujah to Jesus. First Timothy 6:12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. For the assignment tonight, pursue, overtake and recover all, part number two. Our Father, thank you for the honor and the privilege to gather again under this open heavens. I beseech you once again to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven and on the lips and the tongues of clear of your seven son tonight that will come to your people that thus said the Lord. Help me to go beyond my study, preparation and contemplation and speak your word. Move every man, every woman, every boy and girl in this room and for the multitudes joining across the nations through the multimedia from where we are to where you've reserved and preserved for us in destiny. We'll vow to give you alone the praise and the glory. In Jesus' wondrous name we pray. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. You may please be seated in heavenly places. Hallelujah. For those who were in church on Sunday, we began a series on pursue, overtake, and recover all. And I began to say to you that essentially what I believe that is, is the core of this season is to understand what spiritual warfare is all about. And you see, it is those who are willing to engage in battles that will be judged as victors. Those who fail to show up in the boxing ring cannot in their house be declared as world heavyweight champion weight. Those who won any trophy, any medallion, they, they got up to fight. And here God is saying to us, through the mouth of Apostle Paul to his son Timothy, that we are to fight the good fight of faith. By that, 
were to lay hold on eternal life and, and to maintain the profession where we profess a good witness before many witnesses, a good word before many witnesses. So victors are those who are willing to fight. We saw in the book of Revelation the seven churches that they were declared as overcomers. And there was a blessing for those who overcame in all of those seven churches. And I want to believe that those who are in Rogic, those who are in Hom across the nations, by the grace and by the mercy of the Lord, when all is said and done, God will declare you to be an overcomer. Oh, come on, somebody shout a big amen. amen. But that simply means that certain things you're going to overcome on this side of eternity. Uh, but it declares in Matthew eleven twelve, 12, and from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence take it by force. Hear what the Amplified Classic says in this manner. And from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault. And violent men seize it by force. As a precious prize, a share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. <laughs> you are well able in this fight. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. You have got what it takes to pursue to overtake and recover. You see, God is so gracious not only to announce the end from the beginning. He called you a victor. He called you more than a conqueror. But he also takes you back to time where you are and begins to show you what you need to do to actualize the prophecy spoken over your life. He said, you must, number one, learn how to put on his whole armor. Number one. Number two, learn to engage each of those armors and go into battle. Next few minutes, we'll see what those armors are. But I want to recap in our first, first part. Praise God. So we begin to see again the nature and the character of the devil. He's a liar. He's a, he's a con man. He's a murderer. He's a thief. He's the adversary. Uh, he's, he's the accuser of the brethren. You see, when you don't know your enemy, you may not know his manner of operation or what we call modus operandi. But when you know the enemy, that he, all he has is a bag of tricks or a bag of lies, what he has is, is strategies and, 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 and tricks, then you can tell the movement of the enemy when he shows up. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. He's a murderer. He's everything possible. Praise God. But one thing the devil is not, does not have, is truth. No, no. He doesn't have truth. So the answer to his lies is to take on the truth of God's word and resist his lies. And somebody once said fear is, is defined as the acronym of false, 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 thank you, the word is evidence, thank you. False evidence. Evidence means proof. You know, in a court, a lawyer will present evidence against the adversary, which is proof. So the enemy also brings certain charges, which are evidence, supposedly, but they are appearing to be real. Fear, false evidence appearing to be real. But either which way, they're false. And what you need to, to, to identify the falsehood of the enemy is to know the truth. So the way to know false dollar or false any currency it's not to spend time trying to know what is false. What is the blue one? What is the pink one? The yellow one? Don't busy yourself trying to know all about the devil. No. Spend some time with the original dollar. When you spend enough time with the original, when the count of it shows up, you can smell it from a mile off. So we are not of those who magnify, quote unquote, the, the weaponry of the enemy, of the power of, no, no, no. We magnify our God because we know our God is not just the mighty God. He's the almighty God and everything is subservient to his might. So when we spend time with God in his presence, everything else becomes a walkover. So spend time with your God. Know your God more than you're trying to know your enemy. 
But that notwithstanding, don't be ignorant of his devices. Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. Saints, the battle we are engaged in is a spiritual battle. And the weaponry at hand made available to us are spiritual weapons. The battle is fought largely in the realm of the mind. The headquarters of the battle is in the heavenly realm. But the battle is fought by way of battleground in the realm of the mind. So if you're going to win this battle, you must understand the mind and how the mind operates. Bible declares our victory in 2 Corinthians 2.14, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus and makes manifest the savour, the fragrance of his knowledge by us in every place. I began to explain to you that you don't have to want to fight to fight. You don't have to pray to fight. As a born again child of God, whether you like it or not, whether you choose or not, you have been enrolled You've been enlisted into battle. Mm. It'll, be, it'll be spiritual suicide to talk your head like the ostrich will do beneath the sound and pretend this ain't real. No, it's real. The sound of guns, bazookas, machete, not physical, spiritual, you hear? Crack machine guns, they're real. And the one who is fighting you is a wicked foe. <laughs> Praise God. He doesn't play fair. That's why it's important for the believers to be well kitted. Well armed to the teeth. So when they stand against their foe, they are kitted not in their name, not in their weapon. They come against the enemy in the name of the Lord, dressed in the Father's armor. It says, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. So the armor exists, but it's our responsibility under God to put them on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one thing to have clothes lined in your wardrobe. It's another for you to wake up and put on the clothes. And by the way, we never dress for where we're coming from. You dress for where you are going to. I dress coming to church. When I go back, I'll dress to sleep in my PJ. So you dress for where you're going to. And with the understanding that as a child of God, you're caught in the middle of an ongoing spiritual warfare between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, you must learn to appropriately dress for battle. Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. Apostle Paul gave a testimonial in 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought a good fight. The fight is a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I want to give you a basis for victory in this battle. Very important part of the teaching. A basis for victory in the battle. Very important. Don't miss this point. Number one, you need to understand appropriately hmm, that Jesus Christ has fully, completely, and permanently defeated your enemy. Write it down. Never forget that. No matter what battles you face concerning your health, your marital destiny, your finances, your business, your career, your ministry, don't ever forget that your champion, Jesus, the one called the captain of our salvation, our commander, our general in this army, he has already fought successfully. He has finished. He has defeated 
not partially, completely, and fully your enemies. If you believe that one, shout a big amen. amen. That ought to rest in your spirit. Then he asked, man of God, then what is the battle all over? What is battle all about? Well, I tell you what it is. The battle you and I have is simply to engage in certain principles, certain weaponries, to establish the reality of that victory in our lives. Hmm. The Lord said to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 2.24, I believe it is, says, it is time for you to go into the promised land and begin to contest. So rise up, take your journey, and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given, that's past tense. Am I correct? Am I correct? I have given into thine hand, what? Sihon, an Amorite, king of Heshbon. And what again? What did he give you? The kings and what? Their lands. All right. So you'll assume that what you gave, you already have, right? But hear this. <laughs> Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Why will I contend if it's given? Because that given is what is secured and settled in the realm of the spirit. But if you're going to enjoy the reality of that victory in your personal life, in your health, concerning your marriage, concerning your finances, you've got to do something. You must be willing to contend. But you see, when you have this mindset that the victory is yours, you're not contending for victory. No, sir. You're not contending for your breakthrough. You're not contending for your miracle as such, but you are contending from the point of victory. Why? It's settled and secure. Just show up. It's a walkover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we go into every battle of life with the mindset that we are victors. As a matter of fact, we are more than conquerors because Jesus is our conqueror. If you believe us, shout a big amen. That ought to begin to tear your faith right now that in whatever battle you're going through right now, oh, Commander Gadet, there is a predetermination huh, that you're going to end well. Oh, you're not going to end in that pit. You're not ending in that valley. You're not ending with your back against the wall. You're not ending with yourself down and the devil is counting one to ten. No, sir. There's coming a turn somewhere and ultimately you're going to be a judge of victory. Why? You are called a more than a conqueror. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. So number one thing to know if you're going to win in this battle to know that it's a done deal. Christ by his death, burial and resurrection finished it. Amen. That's right. Number two thing to know that the blood shed was sufficient to secure our victory and his resurrection simply nailed and sealed our victory. On the cross, the blood, his resurrection. Saints, one of the primary weapons of the enemy against the believer is guilt. Say with me, guilt. Louder, please. Guilt. All right. Revelation 12, 10 says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren, our brethren, is cast down. <laughs> Which accused them before our God day and night. Guilt. You accuse someone before the judge on account of certain things identified with him 
as evidences in the courtroom. And by pressing such charge, and the person knows very well that the charge being pressed in court brings him to guilt, the person is deflated. The person is weakened. The person lacks the wherewithal strength and capacity to rise up to fight because of guilt. So he used accusation, oftentimes rightfully so. But if the saints don't know how to deal with the accusations and the guilt the enemy brings, they will be defeated. All right, that's how far we can go on today's broadcast. I'm sure you are excited, refreshed, pumped up, energized. That's what the Word can do and what the Holy Spirit does when the people open their heart to embrace the combination of the Word and the Spirit. Perhaps you're here, you don't know Jesus. You're wondering, where will I end up in life after my years here on the earth? Well, you can decide that today by making the right choice to end up in the right place because people's choices and decisions determine their destiny and their destination. Embracing Jesus sincerely, truthfully, will change the trajectory of your whole life, guarantees you to walk with Him here and to end up in eternity with Him. Permit me to lead you to pray this hour, to invite Jesus into your heart as you make me your Lord and your Savior. We'll pray by your hearts and your head. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you just as I am. I open the door of my heart as I invite you embrace you to be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all of my sins. I turn my heart and my life to you as my Lord and Savior in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Wow. Simple, profound, and powerful. That prayer takes you from darkness to light, from defeat to a life of victory. You know what it means? For God to live on your inside all your days. What a blessing. It changes the whole trajectory of your life here on the earth and for all of eternity. I want to pray with you. You have a challenge in your health. You require the Lord to intervene in your life. Let's pray. He's a prayer answering God. Father, in the name that is above every other name, I join heart and faith with all who are connected with this broadcast. For as many who are laboring under any kind of sickness, disease, and infirmity, I pray your healing bow be released now and cause every sick one to be made whole now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, reach out to that one who is going through depression, anxiety, and worry, fear, and panic. I cast that from the root in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let this day be a day of the turnaround and a day of a mighty visitation in this life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Whoa. I'm sure you have a testament to share. I want to hear from you. You said that, that prayer to turn your life to the Lord. I want to hear from you. Look at the number on the screen. Look at the email there. Send me your number, your telephone number, your email. I want to get back to you with some materials to keep you standing short and strong to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you forget, endeavor to connect with the church family where you are. Be planted, be rooted, grow in the word, grow in prayer, grow in the spirit. I tell you, that is the way to go. Hey, your best days are still in front of you. Don't forget, share your testimony of what the Lord did in this broadcast. Love you big. So we'll get back. Same time, same station. Love you. My name is Goodheart. Enjoy. We believe that you have been tremendously blessed by the ministry of Goodheart Obi Akweme. It is our conviction that this message has begun a mighty work in your life. And we pray that the grace for prompt obedience to the Word of God will rest upon you. We look forward to hear and celebrate your testimonies with great expectations.